So first of all, I want to thank you very much for uh, the invitation. It is always a great opportunity to share first and uh, to be and to have this home crowd, which is always uh, very nice to speak to, but on the other hand, it's very demanding because I know everybody, so I have to keep the level up. So I'll start with a couple of questions which are, seem to be very trivial. Would you consider today to drive a car from one place to another without using a GPS? No. Would you consider to park a car without any parking aid? Probably not. Would you consider in our world to do a root canal treatment without using an apex locator? Probably not. So why do we still use these basic techniques of drilling without having nothing but this tactile sense that we use? And usually we have to get trained a lot in order to have this tactile sense very, very developed in order to perform a good surgery. So, would it be nice, beside this tactile sense, to have an audio and a visual control, but not only a very simple control, one that will gain you an accuracy of 0.3 millimeter, one that will give you prevention before you will do any breach in the area that you want to operate. So, that will be very nice. Thinking about something that will overcome almost any limitation that we have today in implantology. And of course, we have sound. So, it will be very nice to have something like this. And of course, first time that you see something like that, it looks like science fiction. Because when I saw it first time, I thought it's something that it's unbelievable. It cannot be. And we started, of course, to look for this. And uh, basically what we found, and everything started in a very rainy November day, last year, like in a very good old rock sound. And we found this company, which is called Spinegard. Spinegard is a French company, which is dealing, of course, with spine surgery. And they have in their arsenal this toy. This toy is called Pedigard. And we're going to explain a little bit more about it. But basically, it is used already in over 60,000 surgeries that were performed in the world. And of course, what is very striking when I started to look at it is that the diameter and the type and the style of the surgery, which is done in spine, it's very similar with what we're doing in oral and maxillofacial surgeries and of course in implantology. But of course, I remind you, this is spine surgery. It's not a small paresthesia of the lip. This can cause and paralyze the patient immediately if you are in the wrong place. So this is the toy that we found and we started a long journey in order to gain this technology and in order to have it in our hands and in order to be able to take it from spine surgery, of course, and to implement it into implantology. So this technology is called dynamic surgery guidance. And basically, you can hear and feel what you cannot see. And be reassured that the trajectory is correct. You can recorrect the trajectory, of course. And the most important thing is that you have it in real time and in what we call anticipation, which means that everything that you'll get, it will happen before a breach 
or something is injured by your drill. Anticipation here, it's the more important thing. Of course, redirection as you need it. These two are basically the founders of this company. Uh, Professor Sian Bourget is a very known neurosurgeon. He's Irish. And Professor Maurice Bourillon is an engineer, a French engineer. And basically the technology, it's a technology from oil research. When you drill to reach an oil field, you cross a lot of layers of different rocks. And it's very important to know in which layer you are in order not to hit straight the oil field. Therefore, they developed that. It didn't work very well in oil industry, but they took it to orthopedics. And basically, the major implementation of this technology is in spine surgery. So just to give you a small flavor about spine surgery, that you can see that if we would have had this amount of complication when we are doing implants, we would be sued every day and would have spent a lot of time in court. 20% of misplaced screws in orthopedic surgery, which is huge. Now, what type of guidance we have today? First of all, we have the regular type of guidance, which we all know, the conventional methods, we use CT scans, we use x-rays, and of course, the drilling tools that we are used to. Of course, it involves n quite a lot of radiation, not always very accurate, and of course, it's not real time. We have the picture, we have the measurements, but we decide it's our decision where to stop. The second thing is surgical navigation, and as you probably saw, there are some companies even today that show their, uh, their, their um, navigation systems, but we all know that those navigation systems are very, very expensive. Sometimes they reach thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. Even a very rich and a very good clinic barely afford to have such type of navigation. And again, it is a virtual tra tracking, which means that we don't really know where we are. We make a CT scan and we transpolate it into the operation. We don't have the real time accuracy. So, of course, complicated, expensive x ray exposure and virtual images. The other type, it's linked more to orthopedics, the electromyography, but it's not relevant for our uses. So the technology uses a very, very simple principle. Basically, the principle is electrical conductivity and the response that each tissue gives back to the operator. So we have a cortical bone response, a cancellous bone response, and of course, a soft tissue response with different type of visual and sound rebounds. So in cancellous bone, we have two types of uh, sound, a medium pitch with a medium cadence. Then we have in the cortical bone, a low pitch with a low cadence. And then of course, when we have a bridge into an area which is filled with blood or air, we're gonna have a high pitch with high cadence. So, this type of technology uses a bipolar sensor. And this bi bipolar sensor is actually embedded into the instrument, which can be a trocar or it can be a drill. And of course, a circular electromagnetic detection at the tip of the instrument, this electromagnetic field is between the two bipolar electrodes. So the changes in the electrical conductivity of different types of bones will give an audio and a visual feedback to the surgeon. And of course, again, the main thing, we get an alert, real-time alert before it happens. 
So again, back to spinal surgery, 97% of the screw placement accuracy, and I showed you before, we are talking about an average of 20%, which is a very, very safe procedure. Sec second, it's a 98 probability of breach detection and three times fewer pedicle perforation in orthopedics. The real time, it's transduced by 58 breach rate reduction among the residents in orthopedics, 98 probability of breach detection in clinical studies, 100% in fresh cadavers. And of course, the time saving is huge. And we all know that the most expensive thing in dentistry and implantology is chair time. So, of course, because it's very reliable, this technique can reduce a lot the numbers of x-rays that we perform in our patients during the surgery. So this is a historic picture. A contract was signed three months ago with the, the French company, and I'm happy to say that we have IP and uh, we have uh, the rights of this technology all over the world. And now I'll show you the Confident. Confident is the new company. And uh, at this stage, we are still working with an orthopedic setup, which looks like that. It's a trocar with a bipolar electrode at the tip, of course. The whole electronics are in the handle. They are not linked with anything. And of course, the most the most, or the first thing that crossed my mind, and I want to share with you, is to try to solve this, I think, one of the most difficult surgeries in maxillofacial and, of course, in implantology is the zygomatic implants. And uh, those who know me, they know that I'm not a shy guy and I can do everything uh, everywhere. But I can tell you with all my experience, I've done only 10 zygomatic implants. Because the risk and the amplitude of this surgery is just huge. And for years, I was trying to get a solution and to find a solution in order to make it simple, easier, faster, and reliable. And you know, it's very annoying. In 1969, Apollo 11 landed on the moon. And we cannot put a drill from A to B, 35 millimeter, in the right spot. So for me, it was a great challenge to do that. So why zygomatic implants? First of all, because we know that the posterior maxillary region is one of the most challenging areas that involve a lot of surgery, sometimes two or three surgeries in the maxillary sinus. And of course, the success rate can be different according to the class of atrophy, but I was also surprised because we started to search the literature and we find out that those augmented sinuses that were under four millimeter, the rate of success of the implants was very poor, around 70%. And this is a challenge, this is a challenge that I think for all of us to try to solve these cases much better and much more predictable. I think the major word that I heard here the last couple of hours was predictability. So it's a well-known technique. It was described by Brennark in 2004. And for those who are less familiar with this technique, they need to understand that this procedure was intended for oncologic patients which lost a lot of bone and it wasn't intended for the use of a, on a daily basis. And of course, the most important thing to remember is that the rate of success, at least the groups that publish in zygomatic implants, it's very high, much higher than the groups that published sinuses with very, very uh, uh, bone, uh, low bone height. Why not zygoma? Well, first, of course, we have those complications. 
Some of them, we are used to deal with them, but some of them, like orbital injuries and one case of intracranial penetration, which we found, are very serious complications. These are complications that we should not be lightheaded and we should re really know how to deal with those. So it's a real challenge to find a technique in order to improve the placement of those implants. So, again, we have to go to the basis of this zygomatic or maxillarozygomatic complex because if we want to do, if we want to prepare a protocol for zygomatic implants, we have to understand a little bit of embryology. And one of the most important things that we have to remember, and it was our first challenge in order to provide a technique which can work not only in Caucasian, but also in Chinese and also in color people, is to find if there is any change in between the species. So just to let you know very briefly that the maxilla and zygoma are basically, basically developing together. It's the mid phase which develops together. And of course, they complete their development around seven to 10 years. Then they cease to grow. And another thing that we found, and this is a very, very important study for us because this gave us the green light to go forward for what I will show you next, is that when we look at one of the latest articles, shows that basically if we draw a line in this area, which is the best area to perform and to insert the zygomatic implant, the insertion of the masseteric muscle into the zygoma. And then we go dry, uh, we draw a line, an horizontal draw, uh, line around first and second premolar. We know that in all the species, this is 90 degrees, which means all the primates, all the primates have the same structure of the mid face. Because the changes, especially in the Chinese, will gonna be around, thank you. F the changes will be in the area of the nasal uh, uh, bones and in black people usually the premaxilla differs. So this gave us a new idea in developing a guide which will be a universal guide that can be used for all our patients. We started the measurements and we started to look at the data that was collected for the old zygomatic procedures. And of course, we measured and found what is the ideal distance in order to do this guide. And I present to you the easy guide. Easy guide, it's a universal guide for zygomatic implant, which has two major parts. One sits on the cheek. The other one sits in the area, of course, of the best area that we found between first and second molar. And what is nice about this guide is that the trajectory of the drill that will go through the inner part of the guide will always reach the center of this circle. So if you place it five, six millimeter beneath the orbital rim, the most dangerous part, on the most prominent part of the zygoma, which is the hinge, the part that goes anterior and posterior like a hinge, you will always aim at the middle of the circle. So basically this is the dream to be able to place a zygomatic implant in a very accurate position, in a very fast way, almost danger-free, using a combination, of course, of the two technologies. One, the easy guide, and second, the use of the pedigard. I remind you that the pedigard will reach you and give you the huge advantage of going to the zygomatic bone using the whole width of the bone 
up to 0.3 of a millimeter, which means that the implant will reach almost the whole body or will engage the whole body of the zygoma. So this is a huge advantage because now we don't have almost any possibility of checking how deep we were beside our, of course, depth gauge, which is very manual and very rudimentary. So we took this, sorry, we took this to Vegas. And for those who think that Vegas is only a gambling place, I have news for you. In Vegas, it's one of the best labs for fresh cadaver work. And uh, of course, at night we were gambling and in the morning we were doing zygoma. And uh, what we try to do is to connect those two technology on the heads, on fresh cadaver heads. And what you see here actually, it's a sign, an external sign which we placed on the desired position of the zygoma externally. We inserted a pin just through the cheek externally into the sinus. This is an endoscopic view inside the sinus. And you can see that the pedigard through the easy guide reached the desired point 100%. Of course, we had to take it out because it was just in the trajectory of this area. And I can tell you that this procedure wasn't done by me. It was performed by one of my colleagues with zero experience in zygomatic implants, just using the easy guide with this technology. This is how it looks after the insertion. It's flapless. These are the insertion holes of the zygomatic fixture. And this is the CT scan. We've done 10 fresh cadavers. All of them, in all of them, we reach the desired position. In all of them, we reach the full width of the zygomatic bone and far away from the orbit. And just to show you the CT scan, the pre op CT scan of one of the specimens. You can see it on the right screen, on the right side of the screen, and then you start to see it on the left side of the patient. And again, the final position of the zygoma. So, just to give you a little bit of glimpse of the future in our vision, first of all, of course, we have all these type of surgeries that this type of technology can help, starting with indirect sinus lift, and of course, absolute safety in the posterior mandible area, absolute safety in flapless procedures, because as we reach or breach before we breach the buckle of the lingual wall, we can get the alert. Of course, our or my dream or our dream is the zygomatic implants performed flapless, and of course, to revive a bit the pterygoid implants, which are excellent implants, but still are placed in an area which is very, very vascularized and a dangerous place to go or to drill in it. So, of course, optimal short implants, which need fewer intervention, shorter treatment time, reduced cost, and lower patient morbidity, of course. And we know now, and we have to admit, even us big surgeons, that sometimes, or a lot of time, short implants have almost similar results with long implants and more and more data is collected now regarding this. So this is our vision for this. And of course that 
this will allow to place an implant which is not as placed today two or even three millimeters before any vital structure, but to reach a very, very close position up to 0 0.3 millimeter from anything, including, of course, Schneiderian membrane. And again, I remind you, with a high safety and with real-time alert. So this is just a small case that I want to show. This is real-time real surgery. On the left side, the work with the trocar, still orthopedic trocar. On the right side, you can see the position, but I'll be silent in order for you to hear it better. Medullar bone, cortical bone, and you can see the position just here. The second one again, we wanted to position it even closer so you will hear it, the alert, before we breach the sinus. Again, medullar bone. We're going to reach now the cortical bone. And you will hear that the cadence and the pitch are much lower. Even a very unexperienced surgeon can feel, can hear this approach. You will hear now a high pitch a bit. This is the prevention before That's it. you enter. But as you can see on the CT scan, it Perfect. actually didn't penetrate the sinus. It just gave you the nice position. And of course, because you know that I'm a bit crazy, I wanted to hear it in the sinus. So the last one, I pushed it just one millimeter and you will see the difference between the alert and the actual penetration in the sinus. This is the cortical bone. You will hear the alert in a moment. This is the alert. And now it's the bridge. But I want to bridge it a little bit more, okay? That's and it. now it's inside. So, the current modalities cannot provide, will not provide a real time uh, uh, information about the fact that you hit an important or a vital structure and of course complete identification of the alveolar nerve canal it's always something that we know about it just after we do it. With this technology we'll be able to reach with the implant at the distance of 0 0.3 millimeter. And one of the things that, of course, we are working now, and we started with animal studies, is to try to take this technology and put it into a drill. What I will show you now, it's one of the things that we've done in France, um, just to position yourself. This is not human, okay? These are pigs, as you can see. What we've done, we open a window in the area of the inferior alveolar canal, and this is a drill which has already embedded this technology with a Bluetooth device. So what you will see, you will see the penetration of the drill, and again, those sounds of medullar bone, cortical, and penetration into this area of the inferior alveolar canal. The voice of the other guy is our engineer. Decreasing, decreasing. Hold on. 
You hear when the drill reached that area, the pitch was high. So, one of the things that we all know that updating with new technology not only increases our safety and predictability, but also it's an excellent way to enlarge our, our uh, number of, of patients, of, to enlarge our number of procedures that we can perform. And it gives a lot of confidence and a lot of reassurance to the patients that we really use safer and better methods. And of course, the treatments that we seek to have and to offer our patients will be much better. One of the things that I want to show you, and I think it's an excellent opportunity because this is published, you know, it's a bit ironic, Journal of Pathology in, in 2017, that there is no link, there is no link between speciality and the treatment excellence. The only thing, the only thing that matters is experience. Period. Sorry? Exactly. And having this type of technology will give you much, much better options to treat. It will give you a much safer net, and of course, you can perform much more procedures, gaining much more experience and being a better doctor. So, I want to thank all the team, which partially it's here, especially Dr. Noah Barai, who helped me a lot in this uh, project. And uh, I want you to be confident that we're going to give you the best confidence possible. And I want to thank you all that you are still with me, although I know that the cocktail is waiting for you. Thank you.